Hello, Tim from Fairplane now on the 15th of November 2022. You might hear some raindrops on the van roof here because it's a horrible day here in the southeast of England. Been raining all day so far. Having so much rain in this part of the world um, this autumn, which is why we had when we had a bit of a respite over the weekend, I was keen to get out on the bike because I knew this stuff would soon be back. But I wonder if this means the end of the hosepipe ban that they introduced here in uh, August, I think it was. You remember when all of the climate lot were sort of moaning and about the hot weather and uh, saying, uh, and the drought and saying, what a disaster, this is proof that uh, the whole thing is real, the whole climate thing is real, and we're probably all going to be dead within a very short period of time because of the climate stuff if we don't take action now. That's no doubt what they said. Uh, well, I wonder if we'll hear about the lifting of the hosepipe ban, which surely, if it's not already done, must be coming soon. But no, I don't think so. After all, the mainstream news only likes to report on bad news, news that lowers your vibration. They'd never report on any kind of good news like that. And in fact, they're probably reporting on how the climate lot are now saying that... Uh, um, all of this rain is proof of uh, you know the disasters to come and you then sort of think well hang on a minute you were saying three months ago that in August that the hot weather and dry weather was all, all signs of the disaster and now you're saying wet weather is as well you can't have it both ways come on you know it's ridiculous anyway just a little comment on the weather there Second thing I want to say is yesterday's video, um, I hope it didn't come across the wrong way. Uh, I think it might have done, from, judging from a couple of comments I saw yesterday, uh, under yesterday's video at least. But uh, I was in no way having a go at people who look at labels in supermarkets and people who worry a lot. Um, I after all i'm a bit of a worrier myself i'm a lot better now but i used to be terrible i was one of these people who uh you know I'd sort of come out of the house and drive up the road 100 yards and then i'd turn around and go back because i i didn't know if i'd sort of close locked the front door so uh uh you know um i'm definitely that kind of person myself so if it came across that i was having a go uh, people who worry a lot, um, you know, I'm sorry for that. And I, really the point I was trying to get across was it's ironic how a lot of these people who are real worriers weren't worried at all when it came to uh, a certain treatment. Uh, and I was trying to get across the irony of that really. So, what do I want to talk today uh, about today? Um, Mark Devlin, who I've talked about a while ago, I haven't talked about him recently, purely and simply because he wasn't on YouTube. He was kicked off of this platform, start of this year. Uh, well, yeah, he fell foul of their censorship and his channel that he'd built up over, I think about 10 years, and he was up to a pretty decent number of subscribers, about 60,000 if I remember correctly. Well, that just all went in the blink of an eye and he was off of this channel and, okay, you've got these alternatives, alternative platforms you can go on to, but you just haven't got the reach that you have on this platform. Um, and you just don't get the same number of, of people watching your videos and because uh, it's a bit hot, harder to find, I suppose, uh, etc. So I kind of got out of the habit myself of watching his stuff, but he started a new channel. It's just called Mark Devlin. So just search for that on here. Uh, well, you won't need to search for it because I'm going to leave a couple of his videos uh, below here in the description box in the comment section come on to those in a minute but 
uh, it's great to see Mark back. I've already subscribed to his new channel and he's come out with a couple of videos, very, very interesting videos in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first one is just a talk by him. Uh, it's quite a long talk, about one and three quarter hours, something like that. But I was riveted all the way through. I just kind of sat through all of that in one session because what he says is you know, really great stuff. And it's called The Weaponization of Psychology. And it's all about you know, things like the nudge unit that we have here in the UK, um, which is all about psychological manipulation of the population. And so much stuff, interesting stuff is covered on that. You know, he talks about how easy it is to manipulate people, which we kind of know already. If you've ever seen Darren Brown, who, if you're from abroad and don't know him, he's kind of a like a magician uh, stroke psychologist here in the UK, quite famous, and he gets people to do stuff, you know, ridiculous things. Uh, well, well, he doesn't do that so much. He gets people to um, come up with something that they think is an original idea but in fact he psychologically manipulated them into the course of action that he wanted them to do. So when he pulls out um, out of a sealed envelope at the end, kind of exactly predicting what they were going to do, they're amazed, but it's only because he's uh, manipulated them in the first place. So fascinating uh, stuff to watch. And Mark Devlin kind of says how the government have been doing similar techniques uh, to him and you know in order to well you know bring about all of the nonsense we've seen over the last three years basically so that's one video I uh, highly recommend that one and another one highly recommended as well is an interview with uh, <clears throat> is an interview with a guy called David Shara Lambus, uh, I probably totally butchered his name there, sorry about that, but he is a fascinating character. I actually saw him at the Uprise and Shine event that I attended in uh, Forest Row in East Sussex about 15 months ago, 14 months ago, I saw him speaking live there and he's a very interesting bloke, he's got a great website which they'll talk about more in this uh, other video this interview and again highly recommended and they talk about the same kind of thing but coming at it from a slightly different angle from David's angle about the weaponization of psychology really and one real standout example of this manipulation that really hit home with me. Well, there's two. You know how on those podiums that Witty and Valance and Johnson always used to stand behind uh, during the height of the nonsense? And it had the three f uh, phrases, uh, whatever it was, um, uh, stay alert, stay home, save lives, whatever. It, oh, I, don't, I probably got that wrong because I don't care. <laughs> uh, never took a, any notice of them, but but it was always in threes, wasn't it? And that's something called the power, power of three, and it's a psychological manipulation. Uh, you know, two, having two of them or four of them or one of them doesn't work, but having three of them works to psychologically manipulate people's minds. So that is why that all of those things were always in threes. And the other one that really stood out for me was, I'm sure you'll remember, even though I doubt anyone watching this participated in it, but the whole standing out on your front doorstep and clapping the November Hotel Sierra uh, every, what was it, Thursday night? So, eight o'clock or Tuesday nights at eight o'clock. Again, I don't remember because I didn't care and because I didn't participate, but it was something like that, wasn't it? And what a awful thing that was. I remember saying at the time, because I was having, you know, I was speaking to various people and some of them were saying, oh, you know, you, oh, you should sort of be sort of participating yourself. You know, why aren't you? You know, it's out of order. And I, I remember saying, well, it's, it's not, kind of the British thing to do is it it's 
you know, it's the kind of thing they do in China or the Soviet Union, um, not here in a supposedly free democratic country. It's just so totalitarian, I thought. So I, there was no way I was going to participate in that. And then it transpires what these guys were saying, uh, Mark Devlin and uh, this David guy, they were saying that is actually a psychological trick that they were doing basically to get people to be compliant in a f relatively minor area because they'd say, oh, it's only minor. All you've got to do is just stand on your door doorstep. You haven't even got to go in, out of your house, really, or up the road or anywhere. Just stand out just for a couple of minutes and just applaud. You know, it's a, t it's a small thing. And you're showing your appreciation to a deserving cause. And that's how they sold it, of course. And that's how they got so many people to do it. But when you demonstrate a little bit of compliance, it psychologically prepares you to uh, be compliant in a more major way down the road after they've done other bits and pieces to your mind as well. And that is almost one explanation of why uh, the uptake of a certain thing, at least uh, treatments one and two at any rate, was so high because they'd got this compliance out of people because they'd uh, manipulated them. So that really is a good explanation of that whole thing, that whole clapping thing. And like I say, I doubt if many or any people watching this would have participated in that. Lorraine and I certainly didn't. And maybe that's one of the reasons why we yeah, weren't taken in and why we didn't sort of go for the various things that go here, you know, uh, as and when they came up. So, very interesting subject. I do like stuff about psychology and the workings of the human mind, and it's very, very disturbing how they can so easily manipulate uh, a population's mindset. Um, it also kind of makes you wonder if we really have such a thing as a democracy here, because all they've got to do is spend a few months before an election doing these psychological tricks and manipulation to get people to vote for the party that they want to get in next. And, OK, not everybody uh, will be susceptible to that, but enough people will be to sway the election. So um, I'm starting to think... Well, I'm not starting to think. I've thought this for a long time, that have we ever actually lived in a democracy but anyway that's a little bit of a side note coming back on to psychology psychology generally speaking they've got it down to fine art and it's military grade psychological manipulation and, it, and it's little wonder that a uh, huge swathe of the population just didn't stand a chance against it because well, we were defenceless against it, but one thing we can do to prevent this ever happening again is just to make the population aware of this psychological trickery, um, which is kind of one of the things they talked about in this interview I'm talking about. And if we can wake enough people up to it, it then becomes powerless because people will just sort of, you know, cross their arms. Not that you can see my arms crossed here, but they are. <laughs> and uh, go, no, I know what you're doing, mate. Get lost, you know, that trickery doesn't work on me anymore. So, uh, and if we can get enough people, you know, aware of this kind of thing, uh, we stand a better chance of avoiding what we've endured over the last three years from that happening again. So, two very worthwhile videos to see. I'll leave the links to each of them in the description box below and the comment section below because they're both on this platform on Mark Devlin's new channel. And I'll let you go and watch those and I'll be back tomorrow. Tim from Fairplay now. Thanks for watching.